Emblem Deck is pretty simple to set up. Either it be your Windows handheld like the RG Ally or your Steam Deck. It's pretty straightforward. However, if you've never done it before, it could be a little bit stressful. So in today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get it set up on your ROG Ally. This can also work for Aeonido, Aeoneo, as well as your Steam Decks. Now, before I get started, I just wanna mention that I won't be able to show you where to get ROMs or ISOs, as well as BIOS files. However, if you go ahead and hit me up on Discord, I'll have it linked in the description of this video, as well as a pinned comment. I'll go ahead and help you out from there. I just can't help you out on YouTube. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get started. You're gonna to wanna to first come to this website, emudeck.com. I'll have it linked in the description down below. Once you're here, just go over to the download tab. And from here, if you have a Steam Deck, you'll use the Steam OS version, unless you're running Windows. But for the ROG Ally, we're gonna want the Windows version. Click on that and download the beta. Now, once the beta is downloaded, just go over to where it is, click on that, and it should start the installation. Now, it's going to start open a command prompt like this. That's perfectly fine. Close out of your window of choice for either Chrome or whatever, and then uh, start from here. Now, it may ask you to change your DNS settings. I don't really do all that, so just you could cancel or continue. Uh, the Windows Store is going to ask you to make sure that it is updated. So, click, click continue for that. And it's going to open up the Windows Store and make sure that your app installer is up to date. If it isn't, you'll have an install or update right here. Uh, as for me, it's completely updated. So you could just go ahead and close out this window. Once you do that, it may take a couple of seconds. But from here, it is going to start to download the MHU deck and everything else that you need that is required. So just give it a couple of seconds. You may get a few pop-ups, as you see here, Update Windows Package Manager. Just go ahead and click Update. Once that's done, you could go and close that out. This is all in real time. This is how quick it is. It's pretty simple and easy to do. Once that's all done, it's gonna start downloading the emu deck and installing that. Now, once again, there are gonna be a few pop-ups depending on what you have installed. Uh, you are going to need all of it. So Git for Windows, if that pops up, go ahead and just click yes, let that install. Uh, once that's done, it's gonna just continue. It's gonna prompt you ever so often to install maybe a Microsoft package or just a certain driver that you may need in order for these emulations to work. So just go through all of it. It's really simple. Once that's done, it'll start to download the emu deck and then you just wait from here. Any update, uh, any pop-ups that happen, just click yes, let it go through and then just continue from there. So once that's done, it's gonna say launching the MU Deck installer. Now, for whatever reason, if this does crash, just go into your downloads folder and that installer should be there. Just launch it from there and it will pop up this window here. But if everything worked all well, uh, it should just do as you see here. So make sure you click yes on all these pop-ups. And then from here, it's gonna to start to pretty much launch and download everything that you need to do. So, what it's doing here is just downloading all the necessary files. It's installing MU deck. Um, like I said, pop-ups are going to happen. Uh, if you need those, um, it's going to ask you if you already have them. Most likely, it's just going to give you an updated version of them. But this is pretty straightforward from here. So I'm going to skip to the next part. So once that's done, you'll have this pop-up here. So you have easy mode, custom mode. You can select easy mode if you want and change things later on. I'm going to select custom mode to show you all the different options that are available. So select that continue from here then it's going to be collecting drives this is where you're going to install your roms so you can either put it on the rog ally itself or on the sd card or external hard drive i'm going to use my sd card and click next from here you're going to select your handheld so if you're using steam deck and steam os you could go ahead and select that if you have an ioneo or anything you can select that obviously i have the rog ally so i'm going to select that one and click next from here you're going to select your emulators um, for some reason, I unhighlighted them all because I wanted to go over them with you and explain which is which with all of these. But to start off, you have RetroArch. This is highly recommended that you select this one. This is going to run your Game Boy Advance, your Super Nintendo, NES, your Genesis, your Dreamcast, all your old school consoles, pretty much anything before the 2000s. It's going to run off of at RetroArch. So collect, uh, make sure you select that. Dolphin is GameCube and Wii emulator, and Prime Hack is basically just a hack for Metro Prime for the Wii emulator. Uh, that's what that is. As you see here, I try to select Duck Station, which is PS1. It does recommend RetroArch. So like I said, anything before the 2000s, RetroArch is gonna run that perfectly fine. Melon DS is Nintendo DS. Citrus is a, Citra is a 3DS. 
PSS X2 is PS2, PS3, Yuzu and Real Jinx, Jinx is Switch, uh, Zemu is Xbox, I believe the next one is Wii U, Main is Old School Arcade, Flycast, Dreamcast, it's pretty self-explanatory, and then MGBA is Game Boy Advance, Xena is, I believe, Xbox 360. So once you've selected your emulators, just go to next. From here, just click next again. I believe I actually gray out the ones I didn't download. You don't need to do that. Just go ahead and click continue from here and then we'll go from there. Next are pretty much self-preference. These are shaders and different things like that for older consoles. You also have retro achievements. If you have an account for that, you can sign in. Uh, but everything from here is pretty much just um, whatever you feel like this is all prefer self preference you can change the aspect ratios of different consoles uh, i pretty much just left everything default uh, you could change it if you want if you think it looks nicer for me n64 i put 16 by 9 but for gamecube i left it as the original uh, original aspect ratio um, these are just my preferences like i said so from here just go on if you want you could just click continue 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 and it'll leave everything at default for me, I'm going to be using Emulation Station, and I'm not going to be using the Steam Library. If you have the uh, Steam Deck, you might want to go ahead and click the Steam Library. Uh, the next thing is just themes. You can skip that. From here, we're going to change the resolution of our emulators. I select 1080p for pretty much everything. You could just leave it all at default if you want. Uh, but from there, go ahead, click Next finish and then it'll finish installing the emu deck with all the emulators that you selected all the settings that you selected uh, and then once this is done i'll go and continue from there as well so once that's done you'll have this page here you can read that if you want but i'm going to click next skip if you're not using steam i'm not so i skip that and from here you're going to want to go ahead and click update all configurations this is just going to update all the emulators and make sure that everything is pretty much up to date once this is done, it may take a little bit, but you're gonna get a bunch of pop-ups like this, and it's just gonna tell you each and every individual emulator that was updated. Even if you selected to install it, it's gonna update the configuration for them. You could just go ahead and individually update the emulators if you didn't download all of them, or you only have downloaded a few. Um, this is just the best way. Do that, once that's done, go ahead and just close them out. And then from here, you'll be able to so see all the different emulators. So if you didn't download an emulator, you can always come here and download them. If you have a exclamation point on them, it just means that it is missing a, a file or something. For RetroArch, it's gonna tell you you're missing PS1 uh, BIOS. As you see here, Duck Station is missing the BIOS. Um, for RetroArch, I believe you could go into it and just update it. I'll show you that later in the video. And it'll say that it's missing BIOS, but it'll still work. But like I said, I'll show you that later on in the video. So now we're done with Emu Deck. You could go ahead and close that out and we could continue on to where you downloaded all your folders. So if you did it on the drive itself or an SD card, you're going to want to navigate to that. So just go to my, this PC or wherever your SD card is selected. My SD card is here. So I'm going to go there and you should have an emulation folder. So if you did it on the drive itself, you'll also have that folder as well. You're going to have BIOS, and this is where you're going to put all your BIOS for all your consoles, your Xbox, PlayStation, PS2, things like that. Uh, if it has a folder, you're going to want to drop it into the folder. As you see, Yuzu here has the firmware and keys folder. This is where you're going to want to drop your firmware, firmware as well as your prod keys. Um, you're going to put that in there if you're using the Switch emulator. If it doesn't have a folder, you're going to just drop it straight into the BIOS folder. You also have a ROMs folder. This is going to have a folder for every single console. This is where you're going to drop your ROMs and your ISOs. So I'm going to give you an example here. I have the Xbox uh, folder here and I have need for speed most wanted now you don't need to have it in a folder like this you could just take the disk image the ISO and drop it into the folder um, but I have it sorted out by having it in its own separate folder within the folder not necessary you also have saves storage and tools you don't need to touch those uh, just leave it as is so we're going to close that out once you uh, gone ahead and added all your bios and your roms and then we're going to go to our start menu all apps we're going to go down to emu deck and we're going to start up emulation station now we're just going to wait for that to load up and start up now if you added all your roms correctly into the proper files and folders you're going to have pretty much all your games populated to the way it should be 
Uh, from here, you could go ahead and press the menu button and we're going to go to UI settings and you can actually change the way it looks with themes. You could download different themes. I'm just going to change this to modern just to show you what it actually looks like. So modern changes it to pretty much a Nintendo Switch. Uh, gives it the same sound effects. It looks nice. This is my preferred way of actually having this look. Uh, from there, I, like I said, if you added the ROMs properly, it is going to populate your MU deck, um, not yet, your emulation station with the games that you added. From here, you can also scrape. So you can select the systems that you want, and it will go ahead and scrape all the different content. So you have the game names, the ratings, uh, metadata, videos. I like to take that off because it's just added space that I don't really need title screen images box art things like that you could customize this to the way you want i don't need manuals or fan art images or so unselect that go back and then press start and it'll actually start to scrape all the images um, for the specific games you want obviously the more games you have the longer it's going to take so i'm going to skip this and then continue from the next part so once that's done scraping it's going to tell you what's been scraped successfully and what hasn't you could go ahead and just back out from there. Now, when you go into a game, it's going to show you um, just to populate it. It's going to show you the artwork. I don't know why it downloaded video, even though I told it not to. Um, that's just it only did it for that one game. As you see, it didn't do it for Need for Speed. It doesn't do it for Mega Man. It's weird. It only did it for that one game. But there you go. So that's how you do that. Uh, I'm going to quit out of emulation station because I do recommend that you do this. If you're going to play more retro games, you're going to want to go to the MU deck folder and go to retro arc. You actually need to set up retro arc first before you start playing. So make sure you go ahead, navigate to that folder and start that up. So once you have that open, just go to main menu, online updater, and we're going to want to make sure that we have a few things up to date. So just click that and then scroll down and you're going to have this here. Now I recommend updating the core info files, the assets, controller profiles, database. Um, those right there, those four are the main ones that you want to make sure are updated. You can update everything if you want. But like I said, virtual arc is how you're going to play anything before the 2000s. So PS1, Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, um, NES, it's all going to run through virtual arc. But once that's done, and everything is all updated. You could cancel out of RetroArch by pressing both the start and select. It's like the menu button or whatever. If you're old school, you know what I'm talking about. And I'll close out RetroArch. Then we could go back into Emulation Station and test out some games. First game on the list is Crazy Taxi on the Dreamcast running through RetroArch. I have this set to a custom 7 watt TDP. Everything's set to minimum as possible. 60 frames per second, 720 because anything higher in the game just for some reason won't go above 24 frames per second, which I'll show you in just a bit. But it works perfectly fine. There's no stutters, no frame lags whatsoever. Uh, you do have some frame tearing here and there, but obviously this is emulation, so it's not going to be perfect. The music sounds crisp and clear, and I really don't have any issues with this whatsoever. It's perfectly playable and fine. So I did come across one issue with this. I'm not sure it's specifically for this emulator, but if you have it set to anything higher than 720p, I have it just set to 900. The game just flat lines to 24 frames per second it doesn't matter on how high you put the wattage i have it set to a minimum of seven watts right now with a manual tdp but even if i set it to 30 watt turbo the frames does not change i don't know if this is a setting that could change within the uh, retro arc or whatever but just a Something to note, I have here Marvel vs. Capcom 2 running on the PS2 emulator, and it works perfectly fine. I also have this set to the lowest TDP, a manual set of 7 watts, everything turned down. I have it set at 60 FPS with 1080p, and it works perfectly fine. So I don't know what's going on with the Dreamcast emulator, but this one works exceptionally well there's no frame stutters whatsoever there's no frame tearing it just works and honestly this is one of the better experiences i had with the emulation now of course i am capturing this through a dock into my pc so whatever you see may be downscaled or whatever but it does look extremely well and plays just as good if you're still here, thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end. Like I mentioned before, I can't really tell you where to get ROMs or BIOS, but if you check out my Discord and message me there, I'll try to help you to the best that I can. Um, links are all in the description down below, as well as that pinned comment. If this helped you out, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.